conference call. Let's talk about the quality of the win over a playoff contender. Mm -hmm. What about the two in a row now? Andy, does that speak to the this group and what they've been able to do, like to beat Melbourne and Melbourne and then to, to beat Adelaide who are desperate for a win? Yep. Speaks volumes for the this group, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it shows where we're at in terms of there's a lot of basketball to be played in the season. Um, the group wants to compete and wants to play for each other. They want to play for the for the Bullets fans that keep turning out every single week. Um, you know, what do we have tonight? Like nearly 4,000 again tonight on a Thursday night. Um, you know, I, I think it. our leaders tonight were outstanding. Um, that's where it starts. You, you know, we've we've obviously been on a roller coaster this year, but I think our, our leadership tonight was was really really good. Uh, Jason, the first half, outstanding. Baines, 16 and 11 in 31 minutes, five or six from the field, six or seven from the line, outstanding. He's up hard showing, at the, up to touch on every pick and roll. Like, great. This guy next to me, just a closer. Sobes, you know. Things, shots didn't fall tonight, but you know he gets a steal and a dunk um, to give the group life. The chase down block in the in the third quarter, I think it was like when momentum's going against us, we were able to resolve and and build together and dig ourselves out of holes, which is which is really pleasing um, in terms of the growth and what we've seen over the past little while. Um, you know, I thought we played really good basketball against United. Aside from the first quarter, we obviously played well against Southeast, and then we put together tonight, which was which is pretty good. I'm um, really happy for the group to, to string a couple together, but I think it's the way we've done it on the back of our defense, which has been most pleasing. Tyler, you can talk us through that last, that last minute of regular time was insane, but just the belief in the group that they, they just kept turning up kept, you know, for each other and, and then got a great win, on, but also in front of the club's old boys as well, which was a significant factor. Yeah. Um, Bandy talked about us being custodians of the club. Um, before the game started. And, um, you know, no matter how this season has gone, uh, that resonates with, uh, with some of the older guys. And I think the younger guys took the challenge on as well today. Um, as far as, you know, no matter what happens, we are a part of the history of the Brisbane Bullets. This season may not go down the way we've wanted it to. Um, but that being said, there are still things to build on. There are still um, moments to be had. Um, anytime you get to lace up your shoes and play in a basketball game, you're blessed. You know, we, we oftentimes get caught up in, in you know, the drama of, of the game, but it's just a game. And we're blessed to be on two feet and be able to, to go out there and play. So, um, you know, it was definitely inspiring to have, you know, some of the legends of the club here today. And you, you definitely want that ball in your hands those last couple of plays too, didn't you? Like, you look very comfortable in that role there take that responsibility on yourself? Yeah, you know, like, um, I, I was a little bit eager a little more today uh, after missing that shot that um, last time we played Adelaide, I had a shot um, to tie the game, and it wasn't even close. And I remember going back to the locker room and those guys picking me up and, um, you know, making sure I kept my head up during that time. And I think the group is continuing to grow in that aspect as far as being there for each other. And you can see it today. It was, I mean, it was spread across the board. There was big performances from a lot of guys. Um, you know, DJ showed so much maturity today as far as um, getting into the paint and not just wanting to, you know, be, ah, I, may, I feel like he had to make that play. He was getting into the paint and making plays for other people, and that's maturity. And um, we have a lot of guys, top to bottom, whoever stepped on the floor, um, you know, who, who put in that effort to make things, uh, you know, turn out the way they did. Maybe that call with 20 seconds left where it appeared Harris had the ball, was inside the, inside the baseline, <laughs> threw it out, and the replay center came back with Adelaide ball. Mm -hmm. I understand the NBL's been in contact with the club and said they got that one wrong. Yeah. Um, they, yep, they definitely got it wrong. Um, so I don't know what to say on that, like, yeah, it was an incorrect call. It was reviewed by the replay center. Um, the the NBL's touched base with the club and said, yep, we, we got it wrong. So they've owned it, which is great. We move on, go play Illawarra two nights time. So we can't change it. Um, you know, like sort of one of those things, right? Like shit happens. Um, unfortunately, it went again against us again. Um, but w w in the past, we, in that moment, would have been distracted by it and it would have taken us three or four possessions. What the group was able to do was huddle, focus on that defensive possession, focus on the next offensive possession, and grind out a win. So the response to the adversity 
shows growth in the group. So really happy in terms of how we responded to something not going our way, um, which is certainly a change for us, and, it, and it's really positive. This one, Jace has formed just since um, he spoke very passionately in this room after the Sydney loss about bonding your identity, and yep. he's just produced two cracking, yeah. several cracking performances, hasn't he? That's real leadership, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, you know, Jace is a really, really good basketball player and has been for a long time in this league. And we've asked him to lo shoulder a lot of weight this season, um, both on the floor and off the floor. And I think some of that weight is starting to lift in terms of the emotional stuff that he's carrying. Because, like I said, like our leadership is is really good. Like tonight, outstanding. Um, so it makes Jace's life easier when he doesn't have to shoulder the burden of everything. Um, he can just focus on playing basketball, and that's what he's done. And, and he's strung together some some good games, and we're going to keep riding him. Like you know, we we know we have really good basketball players on this team, and you know, I talked about it post Southeast. Is like you try and take away Jace. Okay, here's TJ. You try and take away both of them. There's Sobi. All right, you try and take away all that, we'll roll it into Baines on the post. Like we, We've found some rhythm and we've been fortunate to play a lot of basketball in a short space of time, which has helped us find that rhythm. Um, you see teams like South East sat around for eight, nine days and they, they didn't play so well against us and they come out and you know played really well against Tasmania last night. So playing games and finding that rhythm can be really powerful in the course of a season. And TJ obviously knows about that from, from being so long in the NBA. Like When you find that rhythm, like confidence is a mean drug. Right. Um, Bain, I know he played the second half, but how's he pulled up now, Baines? Because he seemed to grab at his foot late in the second half after he landed on someone's mm. foot. How's it pulled up? Um, look, haven't had a chance to talk to the medical staff yet. Obviously, finished out the game. Um, you know, played a lot of minutes at what did he play? Like 31 minutes. I think that might be even be a season high for him. Um, <clears throat> you know, so we'll we'll assess it in the next half hour hour, whatever it is, you know, we get on the plane tomorrow and play Illawarra Saturday. So, look, Bangers is always meticulous with his body and he's going to be no different in terms of this to recover and get up for Saturday night. And, look, if he's not OK, then call Jock Gack, Tyrell Harrison, Harry Froling, DJ Mitchell, like Andrew White can play some four. Like, you know, we've got <coughs> pieces that can plug in and contribute, you know. Like, I thought Harry was really, really good tonight. Like, TJ spoke on DJ, his maturity outstanding game like to, to trust him down the stretch to close the game is, is huge growth for, for DJ so look we've got guys ready to come up um, if, if bangers isn't right but I, I think he'll be fine Chris, you're welcome to come yeah just a couple of quick ones Tyler last time I spoke to you you're in the middle of a, a tough run as a team but you spoke so passionately about how you wanted to to lead this group out of that tough tough stretch and and really get something out of the season that might not have happened immediately but these last three games have shown that this team's capable of doing doing a lot of a lot of good things are you what what have you made of what this turnaround in the last three games and how proud are you of the, the playing group um i mean extremely um extremely proud because i think this would have been the easiest time to throw in the towel this kind of would have been the easiest time to just be like oh well you know it is what it is we can't make the playoffs so you know let's just roll the balls out and play basketball but you know, there's still an intent in shoot arounds. There's still an intent and there's still an accountability. And that speaks a lot to our coaching staff and, and Vandy and Perro and PC as far as <laughs> keeping guys together and not allowing, um, you know, that that sick sickness in the mind to come in and, and allow us to just do whatever we want because it's very easy to do that especially in a season like this um, but we have a responsibility to ourselves and to the game of basketball you know it's there is a there is a karma to the game and you know when you treat her with respect good things usually start to happen it's good to have a full team and it's it, or, you know missing Tanner but it's it's good to have most of our team there which you know it seems like for a lot of the season, it's just been one, you know, couple guys out here, a couple guys out there, and it's nice to be able to grow on that. The thing that stands out about what you're doing is it, it just looks like it, it, it means so much to you and that it, you care so much, and you want to be a leader on this team. Are you just, I guess, through everything you've been through this season, are you proud of yourself for the way that, that you've handled, handled everything? You know, I had to go back home. I remember our conversation from the last time. I had to go back home, and think about the last time I really had to be a leader. Um, and it's been a while. Um, I, I don't think that in my NBA career, um, I really had to be a leader. I had to be held accountable. 
um, and I had to do things the right way and I had to come in and do my job. But as far as being vocal and as far as setting an example with my words and with my habits, um, you know, outside of playing hard and doing things, you know, for myself that would help the club, now I'm put in a position where I have to be more of a, a mentor and I had to really think about it. And this is one of the first times in my basketball career, maybe outside of college, so that's what, eight, nine years ago, that I've had to have this responsibility. And so for me, it did take a little bit of soul searching to, and a little bit of self-check to be able to do that. Because you, you can't just come in and, and worry about yourself and worry about getting yourself right for games because you know when you have young guys, you need them to help you and you need to help them to help them you know for themselves so it's uh it's been a very humbling process obviously um, wish we would have kind of figured this thing out a little bit sooner but at the same time i'd rather have these conversations now as far as guys coming together and guys making those those steps that's going to help their career now as opposed to not having them at all uh, thanks for opening up about that um I guess just lastly, Tyler Harvey's doing some pretty special things for the, the Hawks right now. Do you look forward to a, a challenge of taking him on now on, on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, he's another guy. Spent time in the league. He's a, he's a good basketball player. You know, they're having a tough season as well. Um, so it's kind of one of them things where both teams are dangerous because both teams really have nothing to lose. It's just one of them games where you're, you know, guys are just going <laughs> to throw punches. And um, I don't mean that literally, hopefully, but, you know, um, you know, I think that when when teams have their back against the wall or feel like there's no expectations, they can be very dangerous. We used to call them trap games um, when I played in the league. You play a team that, you know, is not really playing for much and, you know, they come in and play with freedom. Next thing you know, you look up and you're down 15, 20. So it, we're treating these games um, as if we were in a playoff push. And Greg, just quickly, I guess on the back of that, it it's, it's a different test for you, isn't it, than taking on Illawarra, a team that's not, I guess, playing for their playoff lives. But all of a sudden, you're both taking winning form into, into Saturday's game. Yeah, uh, like really happy for, for Jacob. Uh, Jacobus, like Jacob's a hell of a coach and he's been through a, a tough year this year um, down there. So, but like they've been playing really, really good basketball and, and I just admire the, the way that he's been able to keep that group united um, and, and playing the right way. Like TJ talked about the karma in basketball, like what they've been able to do, they've lost so many close games. Like they, they play their backsides off every single night. Like Tyler Harvey's a hell of a basketball player. Sam Froling's having a great year. Wani Swark has found a groove. Like they've got one American right now, so they're down on bodies. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's dangerous to play a team like that that feels good about themselves and to get to you know to break the drought in New Zealand uh, this afternoon was was huge for them and they're going to come into that thing with a lot of confidence and if and if we're not ready we're going to get punched in the face um, by by a good quality basketball team like every team in this league is a quality basketball team it's it's a well scouted league it's a well coached league um, and if and if we don't prepare the right way um, particularly mentally uh, we're going to get punched in the face we're going to have to dig ourselves out of holes and you know you, if you don't give respect to, to everyone on that roster um, they'll punish you so we'll we'll travel tomorrow. Um, um, we'll dive, guys will dive into the scout. Coaches will prepare us um, as we always do, and you know we'll, we'll go and play another game on Saturday and try and string three wins together um, and, and close this season out the right way. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Sweet.